So I've been meaning to make a video about Obsidian for quite a while. And this is just the notes tool that I use for taking all my notes. So whenever I'm learning something new and I want to write something down or anything like that, I just put it straight in this vault. And this vault is just like essentially a way of linking your notes through references and tags. So in the left hand side, we just have all of our notes in the entire vault. And a vault just shows up like a normal folder on the, your system. So it's just a folder with markdown notes inside it. So it means that it's not proprietary in any way. You're able to take your notes, even if Obsidian goes away in the future, you'll still have access to all those notes in a normal universal language. So if you're interested in this, we'll stick around. Now, this isn't going to be a super in-depth tutorial on Obsidian, as a lot of people, productivity wizards will have hour long videos about this tool because it's fully extendable and customizable. So it means you really can go as deep or as shallow as you want, but this is going to be mainly just to get your actual, you using the tool efficiently and fast without going that deep. Right here, obsidian.md. I'm just going to click that. We're going to click get obsidian for windows, download for windows. So when we open obsidian for the first time, we get asked to create a new vault. And what I recommend doing here is, putting your vault on the cloud. And that's only so that you can access the same vault on your phone so that you can take notes on the go layer and then they'll sync between the two vaults. So you'll be able to just access the same notes from both devices or any device if you save it on the cloud. So we create a new vault, call it YouTube demo. We click browse, we click iCloud drive, we click save, we click create. And the first thing you're going to be welcomed with is this window here, which is just a welcome note and the graph view split. And you have tabs at the top so we can close down the graph view if you want and just have just a single note page and you'll see the notes are in the left hand side. You can just delete the note like the welcome note because we don't need it. So if you have not, no note open, first of all, control N is to make a new note. And then straight away, the very first line is always the title of the note. So this is a title. When we press enter, we come down to the line and we're ready to write in the note straight away. You'll see over in the left hand side, now it's made the note called this is a title. And if we want to do tags, we can do hashtag and then tag. That's a tag. But if we want to do a heading, we would do hashtag, then a space. And then this is a heading. Heading one. And if we want to do heading two, we do the same thing, but we do hashtag twice. Heading two. And we just do the same for three, four, five, and six. It's just more hashtags plus a space. So regular hashtag without a space is a tag for notes. A hashtag with a space is a tag for headings. Then there's more that we can do here. So if we want to do an indentation or a bullet points, we'll do bullet points first. So let's say we want to do bullet points underneath heading two. We come under under heading two. We can do a hyphen and a space, and that automatically does a bullet point. This is a bullet. And you can see here, we do never have to touch the mouse because if we hold control and go up one, so we just go left up to here, we'll press enter, and then press control down, control right, and go to the end of the sentence. Also, if we wanted to move this bullet up to head and one, we could hold control shift left like this. We could press control X, move up to below, control V, and paste it in so we never have to touch the mouse how we reference another note is let's say we create a new note now so we can either use control n or you can use this up here right up here where it says new note you can click this as well and be like this is a second note and we'll do the same thing and we'll do let's say we'll put the tag in that we have in the first one which is just called tag and you'll see here when we do a hashtag it suggests us the tags that we have available already previously made so we could just do that and now when we go to the graph view you'll see we have two notes in the graph view that are not linked together yet but they are they are they both have a tag to enable tags we can come to the settings in the graph view click filters and enable tags and now you'll see they're linked via the tag in the graph. So the tag is the only thing that's linking these two notes together. But if we wanted these notes to be linked directly together, well, they would need a direct reference in one or the other note. So if we come to this is a title and we come down, let's say to this line, after we just showed you some of the syntax, 
and we just literally put a square bracket on either side and now you'll see if we do a left square bracket twice we're suggested all the notes that we could reference and because this this one's this is the title and we want to reference this is a second note inside because it's related you'll see now this becomes a link to the other note and then if we go back to the graph view now if we turn off tags it's actually directly linked because it's been referenced in another note in between those square brackets and you can see how this would be really useful for whenever you're talking about a certain topic or writing about a certain topic and then it goes deeper or another topic is mentioned that you haven't talked about yet that you want to dive deeper into later so you could just square bracket on either side make it a new note on the spot and then click into that note and write more about it there's a couple of basic things that you're probably just going to want to know straight away which is how do i open the local graph so I only want to see notes that are related to the current note and not just this big mess of a graph view. Well, this isn't a mess at the minute because it's only a brand new vault for the demo, but it, this will become a big mess very quickly because there'll be lots and lots and lots of notes. And you, a lot of the time you want to look at the local graph view. So just the notes that are related to the current note. So if you open up this note or this is a title and we right click on the tab up here and you'll see if we just click zoom in here and we just come down to open linked view, open local graph what that does is it opens a split view that's linked to this tab so if we change this tab to this is a second note now it's going to be this is the relative graph to this note and you'll see now it's the relative graph to this note okay another thing that you'll probably want to change straight away is like you'll want a theme so if you click here click appearance come over here to manage there's lots of themes available here that you can try out yourself and the same comes for plugins. There's a lot of extendability. So if we just come back over here, community plugins, click turn on community plugins, and then click browse. And you'll see here, there's lots of plugins as well that you can just extend this application with. So depending on your needs, there'll probably be something in there for you. Just thought I'd go through some of these settings real quick. Another thing is Canvas. By default, if you make a new Canvas file, which is just an open, let's say, it's a infinite Canvas that you can put notes on and connect your notes like nodes. By default, they will save into the Vault folder, which they'll be mixed in with the rest of your notes. And I don't really like that. So I like going in the folder specified below. And then now when we create over here, we click new folder. And we just call this canvas, let's say. So now all the canvases we want to be saved into the canvas folder. By default, we would click here, canvas, default location for new canvas file in the folder specified below. Click here and click canvas. And now when we come back and we create a new canvas and we call this canvas one. And now it's a note here and you can, you know, drag pictures in here. You can paste websites in here. You can embed URLs, you can write notes, connect notes to other notes, and so on. So this here is, let's say we have this Canvas 1. Now you'll see when we go back to another note, it's been saved into that folder underneath Canvas 1 here in the outliner. So it just means that it doesn't clog up your outliner that's full of notes with canvases as well. And you can do the same for image attachments. So by default, if we drag an image into our Obsidian node, it will embed the image right here using this explanation mark within the square brackets. But what happens is you'll see over here in the left hand side now it's pasted the images and they're mixed in with our notes. So it's also good to have an extensions folder for all your images that are pasted into your vault. And to do that, we just come to settings. We come to files and links. We go default location for new attachments. We click in the folder specified below. We would make a new folder called attachments or something. So we'll come here, new folder, attachments. Now we're gonna make that the folder. So we come here in the folder specified below, click here, click attachments. And now you'll see if we delete these two images here, now that we've set that folder, when we drag images in right here, so now the canvases and attachments just go directly into those folders by default and all your notes will just be stacked here. You can also put notes into folders like click move two items to and you can make it a new folder, let's say. And then that would move those two notes into a new folder here. 
and you can use folders but you don't need to use folders the best way is to just write your note as you would want to so you just click new note come in here call it whatever you want write your note and then reference as you go so if it does relate to something put the reference in if it doesn't just leave it on its own so probably one of the most important keyboard shortcuts i forgot to mention is command control p or command p so if i have the graph view selected and i want to split it down the middle you can do control p and then you can do split and then split down and it would split that down the middle or you could do split right if you want to do and so on or if you, let's say you want to do this and then i wanted to find a i could do search so I do search and it'll bring me straight to the search bar and then i could do console variables or something and then i could go straight to that note up here and now i'd have access to all those console variables right here and control p is just going to be the fastest way to do most stuff you could i could talk about this tool all day because there's so much to it and so much useful things you can do within it there's extensions as well like pieces which allow you to save code snippets there's one more thing i kind of want to mention as well which is using an extension in another application to access your notes on windows without opening obsidian so this extension or add-on is an add-on for a thing called flow launcher and if we open up flow launcher settings here for a second you can get this at flowlauncher.com i'm pretty sure or we'll just check it real quick so we do flow launcher flowlauncher.com and this is just like a quick launcher it's like the one that comes with power toys but it's a bit better and if you use this and you go to the plugin store here and you type in obsidian And you see this search obsidian notes if you install this on here and you click install and you click yes and then now what happens is when we press activate flow launcher now if we type in ob we can get access to all of our notes very quickly so even if obsidian is closed like now we'll close down all the vaults that we were just open and we open up again console variables it's just going to open that note there exactly where we want it close it down exact same any note that you can think of that you want to access really quickly let's say we go ob and we go depth of field click enter it's just going to open our depth of field note so this is really useful as well for just accessing notes very quickly within obsidian without opening obsidian and searching for it and another thing i want to show you is because the file structure remains just in normal folders like this on your system it means that whenever you copy and paste these into your vault they just show up in obsidian with all the links remaining intact so i'll show you for example here we'll go to let's say programs and tools and we'll copy the blender markdown file and we're going to go to our new demo vault that, that has no notes inside it and we're just going to paste it in there with that new note and when we open obsidian And we open the demo vault you can see here now that blender note was pasted in with all the related notes if you found this video useful please drop a like leave a comment subscribe and we'll be going back to more 3d videos very soon i just thought i would drop this seeing as i'm going to start releasing more notes and you'll be able to take advantage of these markdown format notes within obsidian if you know how to use it so that's it for this video and i'll see you in the next one